soon we're going to have the Global Mercy coming online. You can't help but be moved by the things that you see here. That's life-changing and it's life-giving. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm Anne Buckland, the Global Campaign Manager for Mercy Ships. And we're in the studio of the Global Mercy at the moment. So we have a studio constructed for the come on board season. While the Global Mercy is in Rotterdam for two weeks, we thought it would be a fabulous opportunity to just gather some people together and hear some of the amazing stories of the people that have been involved in Mercy Ships and are involved in Mercy Ships. So with me in the studio today is Captain Durian. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it's uh, nice that you could join us. Yeah. Um, now, Captain Durian, tell me you are a captain. What, what started your, your journey to that destination? My journey with Merchip started really 25 years ago. Uh, it was the Anastasis. The first vessel of Merchip was here docked, also at the cruise terminal in Rotterdam. I drove over the bridge, the Erasmus Bridge, which was pretty new at that time. I wanted to see the bridge, but then on, on my left side, I saw the Anastasis. They had a big sign, two was available, and I was very interested in the vessel. I'm, of course, a seafarer, an officer, and um, yeah, I wanted to see that vessel. I heard about the vessel. I took a tour, and before I knew it, within five days, I was actually sailing with the vessel to West Africa, Benin. <laughs> So that's quite a turn turnaround for your life in five days. Correct, correct. Fire, quite a turnaround. I was sailing on big oil tankers at that time, and kind of that contract stopped, more or less at the same day, and uh, yeah, and and it really turned my my life around. Yeah, 25 years later. Perfect. Ta what did that look like? Can you remember the day that you joined the Anastasis? Like, what was going through your mind? I remember that day very well because it was a very different vessel. Uh, I've never sailed on a vessel like that mm -hmm. with so many people on board. It was like coming on board and it was like I, I, I came in this warm community of, of people and it was just totally different from what I ever experienced before sailing commercially. Very, very different. Yeah. So how does life with Mercy Ships compare to sailing commercially? Yeah, it, it, it Again, it's it's very different uh, with uh, with a large community from possibly 40 different nations. Uh, children on board, that's also very different. So you'll have families on board. And it really is, is in that way a warm community where you have all elements of, of, in a way, normal life, call it normal life ashore. You have that on board a vessel. Uh, it's very different. Perfect. So what happened then? You first volunteered and then what did your journey with Mercy Ships look like? I first volunte volunteered. Uh, I was only allowed at that time to sail a uh, maximum three months with mm -hmm. the vessel. Um, and um, so we sailed to Benin. I was chief officer at that time. And um, But at that time we also make some uh, made some exemptions. Uh, I was able to serve uh, nine months with the vessel and then I did kind of an onboarding uh, school in the US, um, to and which we had to do at that time to stay long term with MERS ships, mm -hmm. which was a great experience as well. And then uh, at the time I was still single and I was able to just go around the vessel. Um, Jim Patterson at that time, my uh, my leader there, he uh, he said, okay, can you join that vessel? Can you join that vessel? So I served on the Caribbean Mercy for a year. Um, and then, um, yeah, then I was also the first captain of the uh, of the Africa Mercy, 15 wow. years ago. Wow! And then, uh, yeah, that's how it continued in a way with Mercy ships. Yeah. So, how has it felt for you seeing the ships develop each time? So you started with the Anastasis, yeah. and it, I spoke to Don Stevens a couple of months ago, saying each ship, his first reaction is she's big, yeah. and it's been quite a, quite an amazing journey. Yeah. Of course, up to now we've only had vessels that we um, we we transferred into a hospital vessel. Eh? It was it was an existing vessel with a certain trait. We 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 totally redid it and and built a hospital in there. But 
you're still limited to the size and the dimensions of the vessel and the layout of the vessel uh, coming to the Global Mercy. Uh, first vessel that, yeah, that Merships was able to design um, and to, to really put things together the way we think. Uh, we still have to see that though, eh? we still have to get to Africa, but we think uh, is the best and most efficient layout for a vessel. And coming here, also the size, it's mm -hmm. just, it's overwhelming. I actually came on board in Malta for the sale uh, from China, so I wasn't all the way in China, but came on board in Malta. And when I saw the vessel coming into Malta, it was like, wow, this, it's a new era in, in Mercy ships. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So just for anyone that might be new to Mercy Ships, Mercy Ships exists to bring um, surgery and training to countries which can't ha easily access it or it's not easily accessible for many people. So we serve many host nations in Africa, both providing surgery and also long-term training for medical professionals over there so that we can upskill the countries at the same time. Now, a lot of the Mercy Ship stories that are shared are about the medical professional volunteers that we have helping, so the surgeons, the nurses, the anesthesiologists. But of course, Mercy Ships is ships. Yeah. So without the maritime professional and the maritime volunteer professionals, Mercy Ships couldn't get to the countries. So tell me a bit about that. Yeah, um, you mentioned, of course, maritime. Um, we, we, I call them a, a little broader, we call them technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the maritime professionals are part of that. Like. Uh, by law, we, we need to have so many certificates, uh, certificated people on board, like my certificate, we need to have on board. But it's actually broader than that. Uh, we also need like electricians, we need people working on our uh, ventilation system, our uh, AC systems, etc. So that goes a little bit broader than just maritime, although we prefer to have people with a maritime background, but we also take people from that that work on these systems ashore, and we train them into uh, a maritime profession here on board. Um, yeah, how that looks like uh, without, of course, uh, and 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 primarily the departments are the deck department and the engineering department. And if I just think about the engineering department, yeah, we wouldn't have the lights here today. We would not have the air systems. Uh, we would not have the hospital system. Mm -hmm. So it's it's key that we have uh, sufficient technical people on board to, to run this vessel. Yeah. And uh, tell me a bit about the technical people that work with Mercy Ships. Like maybe there's one or two. Who over the years has really struck you when you've been working with them? Like you've seen a volunteer who's really, it's really changed their life or something just by volunteering with Mercy Ships. Um, I, uh, yeah, I can think of many people. I mean, we've had technical people serving from a few months till like, like 10 years in a row. Uh, someone that really comes to mind is, is to me a Norwegian uh, plumber that we had on board. He uh, he was really a uh, he was quite a he was almost like a Viking I would say, uh, pretty rough coming on board. And uh, he served as a, as a plumber, uh, very important of course as on board as well mm -hmm. to keep our water systems running, our our vacuum systems, our sewer systems, and. I've just seen him change from from this from this Viking to, uh, although he still has a he, he still has a beard etc. <laughs> he still looks like a Viking, but just seeing him change and 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 being part of this community, being really a, a steady figure on board, uh, not just in his job because that's important, but also part of this community, and really um, yeah helping out in all directions that he can. You know if there's suddenly like something else pops up that is outside of his work, then he will just raise his hand and he'll be there, always willing to help and always uh, yeah, always smiling as well. And that's what you see a lot on board as well. Perfect. So actually that leads me very nicely onto my next question. What kind of common things do you hear from um, volunteer technical professionals when they take time with Mercy Ships? Well, the most common thing is, and uh, I, I kind of mentioned that already, that it's so different of where they come from. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, if we talk about the mariners, they would say, okay, I, I've sailed commercially and I sometimes, I come from my watch, from my duty, and there's really no one around to mm -hmm. sit and talk with, you know. And here they come on board and they say it's, it's so different. People are just so nice, they're so friendly, they're, 
they are so open to 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 one another and to and 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 there's always a group that you can cling on to and 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 be with and yeah just just the community life itself i think that makes makes the the big difference and then of course what this vessel is about the 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 help that we bring, the uh, the hope and the healing that we bring, um, to have that combination of the of your profession and 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 the mission that Merships is all about, to have that combination together, that's really, I think, what makes the difference for, I think, every technical person coming on board. Can you remember for you? I mean, that sense of impact, I think, resonates with everyone who takes part in Mercy Ships. Um, and it's what people are looking for. They want to do something that is going to better the world around yeah. them. Can you remember for you? So you, you saw the Anastasis. Yeah. You went on a tour. Five days later, you volunteered for Benin. Um, and you were on your way to Benin. Um, what was the moment, though, that when you, th when you realized that you were doing something impactful? Well, we, we were sailing from Rotterdam to Benin. We had a short stop in the Canary Islands. Then we came to Benin. And, and then you still, you realize that it's, it's a special vessel. But of course, when you see the first patients coming on board, mm -hmm. you see uh, at that time we were actually still able to also yeah, participate, well, I wouldn't say participate, but we were able to observe surgeries, etc. And when I, for the first time, observed a surgery on board and, and, and saw what it meant to someone who's, for example, they are blind in both eyes and we were able to do, um, I wouldn't say simple, but it was a, a 15 minute cataract surgery on that person. And that person, the next day I saw that person smiling because that person was able to, to see. And to be part of that, because in that way we're all part of it. Uh, I mentioned the lights, but if we don't have deck officers or whatsoever, if we don't have people on deck to sail the vessel to to Africa, then we don't get there. Mm -hmm. So it's all we're we're all part. It's in, I, if you're working in the dining room, if you work in medical, whatsoever, you're we're just one community that works together and that lives together for the same purpose. And 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 seeing that how how it changes people's life in Africa and and yeah that's just that's undescribable yeah. Right, yeah. Right. and 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 in the end also you you think wow you know I'm, I'm volunteering oh look at me what I put in but you know I've received so much more in return y you cannot describe that what you receive in return the yeah also the 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 yeah, they you feel a purpose in your life, and 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 again, I never expected that when I went to America Maritime Academy that I would be able to to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. really amazing. Um, now, of course, so much of what Mercy Ships does is about the patients and the countries that we serve. Mm -hmm. um, could you share with me one patient that sticks in your mind? Like, wh what's the patient story that really, to you, summarizes what Mercy Ships does? I remember uh, a little girl coming on board um, in Sierra Leone. I remember um, um, she came on board with a with a, a big tumor. I think she was around six to eight years old. Um, she was not. Um, uh, at that time, we did. Uh, we we were organizing our patient selection in a huge stadium in Sierra Leone, the biggest stadium, football oh. stadium, and we had like ten thousand people coming wow. there um, to be, so we could actually see them and see if we could actually help them. Eh? We sometimes we cannot help everyone, uh, time limitation, but also yeah, we need to have the right surgeons on board. And um, and she came to the vessel without knowing where she would have to be actually where where she where where the patient selection was at that time. So we uh, we drove her over to uh, to to the stadium, mm -hmm. and she was certainly someone that we could help. And and yeah, just this tiny lady because she came with her mother, and she was really like, oh, where do where do I go to? Where do I get help? Because for them, again, for her, there was at that point no, there was no surgeon in the country. Mm -hmm. There was no money available if the surgeon was there to actually get the surgery. 
And I followed her a little bit, her story, and uh, in a way she was uh, selected. She came on board for a surgery. She had an appointment. And, and to see her yeah, coming out of that surgery, that was for me very special because, well, I was, uh, everybody was just at the stadium at that time. And I, uh, I was one of the only ones on board watching over the vessel and just, yeah, really experiencing that, that one girl coming and, 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 and also how she came out of it. I mean, the tumor mm -hmm. was gone. She looked really like a yeah, normal child again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's brilliant. And I think part of this season, actually, with the Global Mercy experience that we've got on at the moment is being reminded of the impact that just one surgery yeah. has on people and the ripple effects that it has through their community, etc. It's Definitely. further yeah. than we ever really think about. Yeah. Um, you've spoken a lot about the, the technical roles on boards. What, how does someone volunteer for something like that? Is it a case that you have to sign up for a long period of time or how does it work? Yeah, we have what I would say is like a preferred time that you come on board. Um, yeah, we, we, w our, our vessels are, are a bit more complex maybe than an, a standard commercial vessel. Mm -hmm. um, and in that way, if somebody signs up for a week, it is really a challenge to, to even yeah, understand what Merships is about, to understand the vessel. So we are often at least asking for a minimum of a month or so to come on board. Certainly if it's your first time, it's mm -hmm. different if you've been on board already and you can really step easily into a job. Um, and in that way, we, we arrange from a month and, and, and we say, well, just come on board and, and, and see. Also, check us out, see how we're doing. Uh, if this is, if, if you really feel like this is, is the place for maybe longer and again you can stay almost as long as you want um, and and if, if it works well from from both ways so um, yeah again we we prefer people to to stay longer or to return so that uh, in the end uh, it's not just all about training people up and then and then they go again but again it's not like we 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 ask you to stay right away for a few years now certainly in technical uh, and certainly if they have experience in those areas, then yeah, and then it, it then a start up with a month that is already possible. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and so from your own experience as well, if you were to speak, if you were to speak to a young captain who was yeah. thinking about volunteering now, what would you say? Yeah, I would say, first of all, uh, yeah, get in contact with us. Uh, we do have an, um, an application site. It's uh, apply.merships.org. That's, in a way, also where you find all the positions. Uh, that's, th that's also where you can actually put in your application. But at the same time, I'm also like, yeah, hey, get in contact with us, you know. And, and we have national offices around the world. Uh, we have 17 national offices. So you can also, if you're from one of those countries, just contact the national office and say, hey, here I am, I'm a captain, what can I do? And, and they, the, the national officers know whom to contact. I'm also myself involved in uh, certainly senior officer staffing. And uh, hey, I'll, I, what I usually do is, hey, let's, let's uh, pick up the phone or we, we Skype or whatever means we have to, mm -hmm. to get to know each other. And uh, and also if you have any questions because you think well uh, is that really something for me no just get in contact with us and we get in contact with you and uh, we can hopefully answer all the questions that you may have. Perfect. What I'm learning certainly about Mercy Ships is there are far more roles than seem to be the obvious roles that Mercy Ships are looking yeah. for as well. So yeah. it, it's always worth someone contacting, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, we tend to say we have a position for, uh, for everyone in a way. So don't hesitate. Uh, even if you go to the application site and you don't see directly that maybe your position is not there, uh, just get in contact with us. And we will see, we, we, we will discuss and say, hey, is that maybe a possibility? Or, or maybe... Yeah, is there some training that we can do ahead of time that you can actually come with, with some training on board? We, we actually also do that. Uh, you mentioned, of course, the, the training, medical, medical training that we do. Uh, we call that medical capacity building. But also in the technical departments, we have the possibility to train people to go to certain positions. And 
an example is that we have now a chief officer on board who came in as a deck hand without any experience whatsoever. We have our training program on board and we will get him to what we call a rating position. Um, and then he, w he was able through Merships also to go to an officer training. He went through all the steps and he would be just about ready to take over as captain. So wow. that's also possible within Merships, mm -hmm. uh, definitely possibilities for training. Perfect. So there's a whole heap of career progression that can happen as definitely. well. Definitely. No, it's not like it stops there. And, and, and we have, for example, contacts with schools, also with maritime academies. Uh, we work through a uh, maritime academy in the UK, for example, um, that we know very well in, in the, north of, uh, uh, the north of the UK. And um, we send people there. We actually have now two, um, two men from, from Africa there studying to become a deck officer. Oh, wow. So we, we, uh, there are definitely possibilities. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. That certainly opened my eyes to some of the possibilities in the technical sector. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And I hope that, uh, yeah, again, that we will have many people just wanting to check us out and come on board and join us. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.